Real, amen. So welcome, welcome, welcome to our second night. Amen. We got some running behind, but look, I can tell you one that's never behind, and his name is Holy Spirit. Amen. And we want to welcome him. We want him. But something about the word, it always, what I love about it, number one, it says two or three that's gathered in his name, he'll be there. Amen. The next thing it says, it says he'll make his throne upon his people. Amen. And so this is what I ask you. Will you ask, open your heart, not lips, your hearts. Because if your hearts, they're automatic, your lips open up. Amen. Because it, 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 I love how Jesus will tear down religion. He says this. He says, their lips speak of me as Isaiah prophesied, but their heart is far from me. I see, this is what I want. I want something in me that I may be ignorant of. I want it to be in God. I want Him to touch that place and say, don't live in that dimension. Don't live in a lower heaven, but live right here in me, out of every mindset, out of every thought, out of every attitude, and that which I've restored you to live in. Amen. Amen. We come to worship. We come to pray. We come to praise. Amen. One agenda. Ministry into the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Prophet. If you don't care, can you open us up in prayer as we begin? Amen. Come on. Come on. I just want you to touch the throne room. Amen. I want you to touch. Don't just touch it. I want you to go there and release. Lord, begin to let us undress as we go into the Holy of Holies. Father God, because we want to sit at your feet, Lord. Hallelujah. So we give you the praise, God. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you for your sweet, sweet spirit that's in the room. Hallelujah. We thank you for what you came to do on today, God. And we say, have your way, Lord. Have your way right now, Jesus. Oh, 
hallelujah, God. Send us out today, God. Not our will, but your will be done, Father God. Uproot everything, God. Even in this atmosphere, Father God. All around us, Lord, that's not like you, God. Lord, every diabolical spirit, God. Every demonic spirit, God. Every witchcraft spirit, Father God. On today, God, in the name of Jesus, is uprooted, God. It is destroyed right now, God. We thank you that you're destroying generational curses in this hour, Father God. Chains are falling, God. Hallelujah. Chains are falling off the mind. Hallelujah. Chains is falling off hearts right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that what goes and said in this hour, God, it goes forth throughout the nation, God. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, that you are great. Hallelujah. You are holy, God. Lord, in Father God, we thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, God, that we are the generation, God, Lord, who will do your will, who will submit, God, who will refuse to get lost in the wilderness, God, hallelujah, but that will allow you to lead us to the promised land, God, we thank you for the Moses that you're raising up in this hour, God, hallelujah, we thank you, God, for people that are willing to sacrifice, God, oh, God, we sacrifice our
one day I heard holiness preached so many times I heard holy spoke but the Lord spoke to me so I mean it was it brought a level of fear or not like fear like scared but reverence he spoke to me he said son holy is a dimension it's a place in me it's a place where you run to me it's a place see what happened when sin come in in, the, in Genesis ha, and it's they, it, God would come down it said in the cool of the day ha, what would take place is as, as, he, uh, as, as sin had entered and the father come in they heard him he said so you gotta understand when the weight of God, the birth, the beauty, the holiness of God walks on the scene. It'll do one or two things to you. Either you feel conviction and you respond to holiness, you respond to it, or you will run from it. What did they run and do? They put on their, their guilt, their shame, their fear. It had attacked them. That was their identity. But I'm here to tell you, how holiness is a dimension. The enemy can't go there. Only you can go there. And, and I want to speak because I kept seeing. The Lord spoke to me coming down the road. He said, I will restore joy tonight. I'm going to restore joy. See, some of you think about happiness. I'm talking about something inside of you. It don't matter what emotion you got going on in you. I'm here to tell you there's a part that you can tap into. And it's in His holiness. You know, no matter what's going on, He's got you. No matter what's going on, He said, I never leave you or forsake you in the midst of the chaos. See, I love what Paul said. See, sometimes we, we miss things in the Bible, but we read. Philippians 4 is it's just like four walls in a house. But you got to understand the kingdom ain't locked in four walls. Huh? It's to be built in an earthly realm. It's to, it's to build kingdom business. It's to build high places of the kingdom on the job. As you go into uh, different places as doctors. Huh? I'm not talking about, I'm talking about taking back the mountain. I'm talking about bringing holiness to the place on the street. I'm talking about what's inside of you when you tap into it. Automatically it shows up. And I love what Paul says. He addresses the church. He says, hey, these two young ladies, how they labor with me, but they are of the wrong mind. They have the wrong mind. See, we limit ourselves sometimes. My point being with this, as he goes in this, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. Joy is who he is. Amen. Rejoice is a command. It's something I put. I say, you know what? I don't care even if I missed it. I'm laying it down. I'm going to run to the presence of God. I'm not going to feel condemned. I won't come in agreement of my past. I won't come in agreement with this situation. See, they had a jacked up mind. But he said, hey, I implore you. He takes the focus off the objective of two young ladies. And he says, hey, the book of life. Come on. Where are you sitting? Come on. Come on. What has he written about you? What is already predestined about you? But this is what I want you to understand. He says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. I can think about David as he was out in the field. David, as he began to slay that fire, he come to slay that lion. But there are those things that was attacking him. But hey, what? When he stood in front of the giant. See those times, those past battles, those things where God moved, and you know it had to be Him that moved. No, otherwise you was taken out. See, that's where you gotta tap in into a place of holiness. He says, "I won't leave you. I, you don't live there. You live in me, but I'm sending you there." And there will be some objectives that I will give you the ability from my mind. Amen. The mind of Christ. This is what I started to see. I seen some things kind of, and I, I man, you might not like these words, but I seen some things jacked up on the job side. I seen some things that's got stirred up. Can I tell you, when you've been praying, some things are going to get stirred up in this earthly realm. People are going to start to manifest. People are going to start. It's going to seem as if it's worse. But Paul says rejoice, and I can't say rejoice. And he goes on. Because now he's put it back on the people. What is he telling them? He's saying, look, if you'll focus on the one that's redeemed you, the one that called you, if you'll focus on that, rejoice again, I 
I say rejoice and know that the Lord's at hand. Why? Because you got to be gentle with all men. Gentle, when you start to break that down in context, it talks about being forgiven, forbearing. In other words, you're going to face some things. The moment you start to, when you walk on the scene and the holiness of Jesus Christ is inside of you, when Yahshua starts to stir in you, look, these people are going to two things. They can either run to Jesus, not you, to the presence in which you carry, that dimension where you're seated, or they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, you see what I'm saying? It's your response that will win them. It's your response. When you respond in emotion with him, because they rejoice and enjoy and an emotion, it might impact them. But I'm here to tell you, it'll take you somewhere. It'll say, hey, I was once here. I, and God begins to pull you up. He begins to pull you back out of your emotion, out of your mindset, out of your imagination. And he goes on to what I love the best. Be anxious for nothing because I identify your anxiousness. I felt it when I walked in the room earlier. I felt it when I walked back in. But that's the glory of God. He'll identify something where He can take it out. He'll cut that thing. Holiness is a dimension. So what does it do? It takes you out of this realm. It'll take you out of your emotions in the second heaven. It'll bring you into the holiness of Christ Jesus. That your emotions are very real. But He'll bring you into perfection of who He is. But it says, be anxious for nothing. So don't tell me I ain't going to be anxious, right? Amen. It means I'm going to have it. That tells me I'm real. That tells me I ain't suppressing things and not dealing with life. Because I live a real life. I don't know about y'all. Um, me and my wife, from time to time, we'll have a little argument. From time to time, the kid kick me in the knee. Um, from time, you know, it ain't always just Legos. I live a real life. I go to work, people out on the day that sometimes I'm acting crazy. But I got a choice. I got a choice. Be anxious for nothing. What does it say? But with everything by prayer and supplication. Yes, Lord. By prayer and supplication. Focus on the situation. Don't focus on the circumstances. See what happened. Now we've been redeemed of this. They started focusing on things they had never seen. So that fear and shame and guilt started to come upon them in that waiting presence. But you've got to understand this. By prayer, he'll pull you back because you'll know the difference. Yeah, if you study your word and you spend time with him, don't just read it. If you can know from Genesis to Revelation, but if you're not experiencing that word, if he ain't waking you up, if he's not putting burdens upon you, if he ain't saying Hey, I need to deal with that because that ain't you. It's real life. With that, suffocation, sup. So when I read in my word, it says this, and I sup with the king. I got a seat at his table. In his word, it tells me I have a seat in his table. And look, it's not just when we get here. You know what? You can be around a conference table. You can be in your cubicle. You can be putting things up at Walmart. You can be going wherever you're doing throughout this world. This is what takes place. You can what? You can rejoice again. I say rejoice. Because why? You need to be gentle with all men. Because the Lord's at hand. In other words, it ain't about you. It ain't about your plans. It's about what he has laid up. If you read about the early church, I, they were struck, they was beaten, I, they, all this stuff happened. But guess what? They went locked in four walls. They were going from place to place. Yeah. Building the kingdom. Uh, prayer and supplication. Supplication transfer that burden totally. You know what? Don't just get a little bit of pressure off and live there. So I will not stay here, but I'm going on up. Amen. I'm going on up. I will not. I, I refuse to live in a sack of hell. In my emotions, in my mindset, in my suppression. So I love it when Paul says, count it all joy. He's talking about trials coming. An hour of pressure. So will you stay in your heaviness? Will you stay in your emotion? Will you stay in your mindset? Or 
will you respond to God and what He's saying in this moment? Because He has some plans, He has some places, He has some areas in this earthly realm that He's going to send you. I love, this is one thing I love about God. The first time I heard somebody prophesy nations, I got all excited in my emotions, you know, uh, by Pastor Kim. But it's one thing about it the next time. Because I learned something in that season. It wasn't an emotional thing that I need to be excited about going to nations. Now when somebody prophesies, I say, Lord, I receive because it's your will and way. But this is what I need to know. What is it? Because any man that would build, pour the foundation and start to build a house or build that uh, 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 that big wire house and get halfway through and stop. I'm here to prophesy to some people that you're going forward. Huh? But it's going to be, you got to know the step you're in. Because there is intimacy in that step. There is intimacy in that moment. And in that step, it will give you the ability to stand in the next moment. Stand in the next day. Stand ten years from now. As God is sending you forth. So, Father God, right now, I thank you for every individual right now. I speak right now, Father God, over every heart every heart that's postured to you. Father God, even hearts that kind of shine away. I, I, I say right now, every voice that's not of yours is canceled right now. It is shut by the authority of Jesus Christ. You will not leave. You will stay here. I command every spirit right now that's trying to speak to be broken. I thank you, Father God, that they come out of this realm. All right the second heaven into Father God their rightful seat and there Father God as they chat with you, they talk with you, they get real with you. In the midst of that Father God they'll suck with you Father God they'll eat of your goodness they'll eat of your splendor, they'll eat of who you are and it'll remind them that they was created in your image that this is just a mere moment that Father God you're putting pressure to take and show something that may have been hidden, that they was ignorant of that Father God is they acknowledge it you can address it and it takes Father God, into a, a, a sphere, into a dimension of who you are. Father God, that of holiness that only you abide in. So Lord, I thank you right now that Father God, people in this room, I've got to speak to anxiety. And I say it's broken, Jesus' name. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Pressure of the chest, come off. Pressure of the chest, come off. Lord, I thank you for it. And thanksgiving. Father God, we thank you, Father God, that you're meeting every individual right where they're at. Yes, Lord. I speak to the hunger in them. The hunger that they know the rightful seat and what they're eating and who they're eating with. That all confusion leaves. Clarity comes forth. Their paradigm is shifted tonight and joy is restored. Come on. Joy is restored. Rejoice again. I say rejoice. Joy is restored. Joy is restored. Joy be restored. Come on. Some of you are breaking through. Joy be restored. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I speak over every business owner, Father God, right now. Father God, where it seems bleak right now. Where it seems things are chaotic. Where it seems things is, uh, I, I don't know what could happen next. I thank you, Father God, for every entrepreneur, spirit, Father God, son and daughter that you put that in, Father God, right now. It is the time for breakthrough. That, Father God, if we could do it, or if any, any entrepreneur could do it, Father God, uh, you, we wouldn't need you. But I thank you, Father God, when there's little in the natural, there's abundance in heaven. And I thank you right now that you begin to even release plans, Father God. Uh, to businesses, uh, downloads, 
comes, Father God, not just to be in their field, but Father God, that which sets them out of us in front of their field, that you can be glorified, that you would even open, Father God, and that of Jer uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 11, that Father God, you shall multiply the, the, uh, the cattle of the field. I thank you, Father God, for everything that every individual is putting their hands to. They're doing it unto the Lord. And with that comes a promise that multiplication comes forth. Father God, not for our glory, but for your glory. To build the kingdom. To take it high. To be a fist in this earth realm. To bring breakthrough in people. To have healthy places. That people that are broken. That people of the world can come to. And that level of holiness is in the marketplace. In such a way that it will shield through breaking high. It will break the false identities. It will break oppression. It will break high. Yes. Binding by the authority of Jesus Christ. We bind, Father God, mammon. But Father God, we thank you that you release it. Huh? You said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Something opened it up, I'm telling you. The, uh, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Father God, I thank you right now. Because of Christ Jesus, you have made us righteous. We remind you of your word. And we say that your word is a put in a man on us. That Father God will no longer be slowful. We'll no longer go with what the world does. But we'll tap into the new word. Huh? And we will see it manifest. I want you to stand up. God's called you into business. What I want you to do? You stay right there. Y'all stay right there. Let's uh, Father God, I thank you right now that you're unlocking. Yes, Lord. You're unlocking. Whole strings. You're unlocking. Father God, it says when they was in the wilderness, they and they come out, Lord. It says the man has stopped. Father God, I thank you right now that every aspect, hi, yes, Lord, the wisdom of the ant. Father God, I thank you that the wisdom of the ant is hidden the body of Christ, the entrepreneurs that are standing right now. Father God, is every ant is connected and they know their part. Father God, we are, I, I say every eyes on you, King Jesus. I, we have your mind. It means we have that problem solving. I thank you right now, Father God, that every entrepreneur is being opened up into a new realm of your glory. That Father God shall flood, Father God, through their hands, through their feet. Father God, not for something just to get rich, but something, Father God, that shall spend. express your glory. Speak to the ones that may even be negative in the bank account. And Lord, I thank you. Look, I don't do this, y'all, but I see this. I speak to where there's been lack. And I thank you that you, ha, I thank you that your sons in this room, that's everybody, your sons in this room are tapping into the overflow of who you are. Your Lord Jesus himself said, don't worry about what you shall eat or where you shall lay or what, I, I thank you right now that Father God, because ha, we're seated in a holy God, God Almighty, that Father God, that dimension of holiness will produce ha, that which your word said. I'm starting to see business ideas what I see business ideas new inventions new inventions new inventions new inventions I see you to you. Multiple people. Multiple people. And look, this is going to be people that has wealth, wealth. And I see that even the dreams inside of you that God's putting, I see an encounter with God about seven, eight years of age. And I see 
preaching, I'm starting to show you things. And I hear the Lord saying, Son, I'm coming to birth in this season. The things I spoke to you, I hear the Lord saying, Write it out. Make it plain. Remind yourself daily. Keep preparing. Keep going forward. I'm going to sit you with kings. And I'm talking about an earthly realm. Ones with authority. And I'm telling you, you won't just handle their money, but it's going to bring an overflow. But I just see in a sense, it won't be like a bank, but it'll be a storehouse. This 
space this then there's some of this I already know but I see this where these this group of people these eyes uh, like these investors they're gonna call you and they're gonna call you in the midst because there's gonna be a re-signing of a contract they was something that you held up and there was a standard uh, but I see you sitting around like it's an oval table it's a re-signing of a contract but then I go from like this marble looking table to like a wood it's like it's covered in something like I don't know what you call that it's almost like a reddish color but I see you I see multiple contracts being signed and this is what God's about to release into that which he promised you. that which he spoke but these other contracts are of other strings certain things that are going down and you will bring the new word that brings them back up. And I don't even know. I'm just going to trust God. I even see like it's weird. It's almost like clothing. I keep saying clothing, 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 clothing. Have you ever dealt with anything with any clothing other than putting it by? Well, we know each other a lot good bit, but I don't know nothing about that. I see clothing. I do. I see clothing. I ain't saying that you'll be doing the hands on, hands picked, but I see you owning from an area that all you have to do is steward that thing. Is you got a team in place and administrators in place. There will be a. Uh, and it's almost like I see this. Hi, yes, Holy Spirit. Thank you. You know when they cut those aprons off the of palm, they would see it. Because what God is doing through that, and it sends it forth, there will be a level of power that comes forth with this. There will be a draw. It won't be just a physical clothing. I see the level of humility even. It will start to wrap around some leaders. And I see them opening things back up in a major way for you and Miss Sarah. I'm talking about in a way. Um, it's like, it's almost like y'all are tired of ministry. And what I mean by that, not ministry to the Lord. But so many people have seen your gift and missed your heart and looked at you in the natural. But I hear the Lord say, just as I sent Samuel to David, and that's that kind of heart that you carry that's postured into the Father. And with that, he says, I am bringing you out. I'm bringing you forth. He had to cut some people off. So what you go, I had to cut some people off that it hurt. Says I've done that to protect you, that they wouldn't really, they wouldn't like. It's almost like they would have left you on the front line. Actually, some of them did. But I hear the Lord saying, I'm restoring and I'm putting the right people in place. You will, I hear the Lord saying, just I don't know why, but He says, Tell you, you will not stop traveling. It's picking back up. And though it may have been, it seemed like it was like. You know when you're on a hot, thirsty day in the middle of like, the sun? I know that Texas weather's probably pretty crazy. I ain't been there coming. But it's like that last drop that's in that jug. When it's that hot, I almost see on another nation. It's like you had just that last drop in that jug. But it got you through. I hear the Lord saying, I'm feeling it back up. I'm filling it up into an element. Because then I promise you, you would never thirst again. I'm taking you into new areas of me. And I even, I the, the Lord, I speak right now. Even I, There's even been some lash. And there's been some false things. And there's been some accusations. And things has been spoken against you, Miss Sarah. But I see the oil in heaven. I see an angel beginning to pour oil that's out upon your shoulders. And it's bringing healing. High. It's taking high. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Father God. She said, I won't compromise. And I won't stay in this bitter. But I don't know how to go forward, huh? but I thank you right now that the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ in the blood there's God healing angels. I see them going into certain areas huh? where some of these people turn their back. Huh? Even some family has said some things, huh? but I speak now in the heavy areas and I prophesy now, Father God, into the dry areas. Now, Father God, I thank you right now that there is a refreshing coming upon her.
see an area that he's breaking right now. But I see restoration there. And I just heard the Lord say, you will testify to these things. You will begin to speak this. You will begin to speak it high. I see y'all speaking regularly into marriages. I see like, uh, uh, y'all will go. Y'all will go to different nations. Y'all will go to places. And as you go there, huh, y'all have things. There'll be things that God that day as y'all go. But I see y'all starting to see. I see this clay. It's almost like a little clay house or something. I see y'all entering in. I see y'all sitting there. Uh, looks like a table. Uh, I, I, I see. As y'all begin to testify the things that y'all went through and that y'all couldn't give up, but y'all stay together. Y'all rebuke the witches and y'all spoke the things. Y'all continue to run this race. Y'all took it and said, hey, we're one and we're going forward. I see how such times uh, of reconciliations of marriages, of different ministers, of one's high, yes, Lord, of one's high, that right now they're separated. Ha, they're separated. But I see that as God sends you, He will bring reconciliation into those marriages. Say, keep riding, keep riding, keep speaking, keep standing, keep standing, keep doing all you know to do. I see, I see the Lord's coming to heal some areas, and even through your ridings, He's been doing that. I even see it's crazy. I always see like you riding, and I see angelics around you. I see there's even times that you're in the presence of God, and it gets a little uncomfortable. But I hear the Lord saying, "I'm coming to snatch the car, the scar tissue. I'm coming to snatch certain things that held you back, and you will begin to ride. You will almost be like, how in the world am I riding this this fast? And can I keep up with it?" But I hear the Lord saying, "I, I have made you a scribe. I see you writing different things. I even see you writing poems." You write poems too. I know you've written some stuff, but I see poems. I see poems. And it won't be just poems that rhyme. And as these poems go forth, it's almost like songs. And I hear the Lord say, just be real. He says, as you come this far, I will take you the rest of the way. So, Father God, I thank you from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet right now, Father God, that is activated in her. I thank you, Father God, that her hand will begin to rise. Ah, yes, Lord, I thank you that you would even bring that laptop to her, that she would be able to, Father God, begin to, uh, uh, to, 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 to lock these journals. I see a journal in front of you, and the Lord is even, it is like your dreams are going to come, start coming regular to you, okay? And, and and worse times in the past has been crazy dreams. Uh, uh, Lord, we speak to her dream life and we say it is purified in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, as you open it up, you will give her wisdom in areas, Father God. As, as emotion may have responded in past seasons, but your wisdom, your mind shall respond in this season. classroom 
Because you don't play for shit. You don't play for an audience. You play for the Father. And with that, I hear the Lord saying, it's almost like I see you in your classroom and you're playing. I see you going in and setting the atmosphere daily. I know you carry it, but there's something that happens when you begin to play that. Uh, the time saying it's daily, you're going in and you wire yourself out. That's not what I'm saying. But any, it's, it's like any time those opportune moments come to pull you down, when you, like, kids start to act up, when all this starts to take place, the Lord's going to direct you. And it's almost like I see another set of keys that God says, I'm going to pay for. I'm going to send to you. And it will be of a place that you can continue. And I also see different teachers um, coming to you asking, well, I'm talking about some 40 and 50 years of age, and they're going to say, I believe in Jesus, and I believe they do, but there's going to be a level of wisdom that you begin to speak into, and you're going to begin to speak into their hearts. Some of them's weary, but those children need them. And the birth, huh? there's a birth thing that starts to come place. Huh? As you speak into their life, as God speaks and you facilitate it, you're going to speak a life back in. I even see some that will be ready to retire, ready to quit. But as you begin to speak, I, I see them start. It's almost like dry bones come alive. And the Lord said, I will give you favor in the schools. I will give you favor in education. settings just as she plays at home. Father God, unto you, I thank you, Father God, she'll play to you. Father God, in the educational system, that Father God, that people, will have, even children will take and start to ask her questions. I, I see your feet burning fire. I see your feet begin. I, the Lord says, I have shot at you with the gospel. I, you will be able to stand boldly. You will be able to lead those children. I, I, he says, speak courageously. And those kids, it's almost like I see a prayer line. They won't even know where it come from. It won't be just because you taught them how to pray, but it'll be the atmosphere that's set. God will begin to draw, and all of a sudden they'll start to hear His voice. His voice will be opened up, and those children, they will be sent home. They will go back into their household. Even ones that are broken, ones being abused, ones that's in drug homes, but what they will carry will bring reconciliation unto the household in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Flows down to those 
whom God has entrusted into his, watch here, into his apostolic calling. And I hear the Lord saying that with pain, the Lord took me to 1 Chronicles, the fourth chapter, Jabez. His name meant anguish and pain. His mother named him that because she was in pain when she gave him birth. Jabez lived his entire life with the name pain attached to his identity. And as of such, he would pray and cry out to the Lord. And he asked the Father, Lord, enlarge my territory. And most of us interpret that to be land and we interpret that to be something monetary. But the Father began to take me deeper in that push on that revelation. And as J. Baptist was praying, he said, Father, he says, Lord, enlarge my territory. Put your hand on me so that I will no longer have pain. I cannot hold that about you. And I hear the Father saying that this is a place of enlargement of territory. The thing that Jabez came into was not something that was territorial in terms of land, in terms of, of something monetary, but it was his identity being and revealed, his identity becoming enlarged by way of his thoughts. And he knew what was tied to him and he no longer wanted to be anguished because it was not the Philistines that were tormenting him. It was his identity that oppressed him and suppressed him. And therefore he had to cry out and this place in real identity ministries is a place that I hear the Father say where those who are broken, who are lost, who are in a place of misidentity will come in and cry out and say, Father, enlarge my territory. Give me a place that I can speak and say and feel and drop the things that I need to drop that no other place will be able to receive me in. For real identity is about to shift this city. It's about to shift this territory. It is about to enlarge the territorial minds of those who are in bondage, those who are trapped, those who are in pain for what their mother said to them, their father said to them. Generational curses of being over this place. Whereas the enemy, the deceiver, were trying to come and deceive me such as he did with Eve in the garden and made her think that the eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was something God didn't want her to eat from because it would make her like him. But little did she understand, although she probably forgot she was already made in his image and likeness. She didn't need to eat from a tree, nevertheless. There was nothing there to eat. She was already in his likeness. And I hear the Lord saying that in this season, the enemy is going to try to deceive you and make you think that there's something else out there that's going to give you the affirmation you need. But I hear the Lord saying, not so. You shall walk in the affirmation of the Father. For I hear the Lord saying, this is my son and my daughter, whom I am well pleased with. Before Jesus cast out the devil, before he did ministry, before he walked on water, and before he called ashes from the dead, the first thing he needed to do before he launched out was to be affirmed by the Father before he could do anything else. His affirmation gave him the confidence to move in the power of the apostolic place in which he was called. And my brothers and sisters tonight, you will walk in the power for your affirmation is before you. I hear the Lord saying, well done. I hear the Lord saying, it is you, my son and daughter, who This is a place of enlargement. Names get changed. Apostle Dustin, I just have a quick word, man. I promise I just to a few people the Lord. I'm going to make it very quick. Ashley, I'm not a king that I'm I saw you just taking your hand and rubbing it over the eyes of your sons. The Father said that I'm preparing you to teach them to be watchers. You are raising them up, and this is not just a woman's intuition. This is a prophetic insight 
that you are passing down to your children. You're teaching them at the youngest of age now to be sensitized to the things of God. And I saw the Lord, like the Lord showed me you just wiping your hand over their eyes. It was it was much like Jesus taking the mud and putting it over the man's eyes. And I had a father saying that you are raising up watchers. They will see and be eyes and ears for both you and your husband. When your husband and yourself cannot see, and there are some blind spots along this journey, your sons will cry out and say, watch it, mom. Watch it, dad. I see what's coming around the corner, for I am raising them up to watch and to see. But they are not too young. God said, I am forming them. I am nurturing them. I am cultivating them in the gift. And I called you for the anointing that is on your life. It's falling on them. It is moving on them. And they shall pick up your spirit and move in the power of the grace. And they will be eyes. They will be ears. And instruments that are shopping. And that will then be inclined to the voice of what's coming out of heaven. Say of the Lord. Where is the young man with the tax? Did he leave? Oh, there he is. The father told me to tell you, this next season, finance will never be a problem again. You will not have to worry about money. Can I ask you to do one thing for me? Can you just touch your son? Is this your son? Can you just... What I want you to do, man of God, just take your hands and rub them like this. And just clap them three times. This is a prophetic illustration. What creation is in those hands? There is not anything those hands cannot do. I break down in fear of you in the name of Jesus. The Father told me to tell you that in this season, He's going to be downloading some things you've never heard before. He's going to be downloading some things that are fresh, right out of the third heavens. The things that the throne of grace is going to put into your system and into your spirit. I hear the Lord say, be not afraid of the new thing that I'm getting ready to do into you. It's not going to be the normal. It's not the recycle. It's not what it once was. It's not what you've been familiar with. But this thing will be something that is of a newness and of a level that is about to shift your thinking and put you into a season of creativity whereby you will not have to put, you will not have to worry about finance ever again. I hear the Lord saying your children should never be without you. I hear the Lord saying be not worried about college. Be not worried about their future. For my hand is upon them and they shall walk and they will be educated and they shall walk and break down systems and they will sit at tables and make difference and they will be able to speak the things all because of your hands. Your hands is generational. Your hands are as heavenly force to it and I hear the Lord saying, as you lay your hands on your family, as you lay your hands on your children, be not afraid. Whatever you put them, you shall prosper, man of God. You shall prosper. And those that don't understand you, be not afraid, be not worried. For the Father said, I have an audience that I'm raising up. I have a group that I'm raising up that needs your voice, man of God. Be not afraid and speak that was thus saying the Lord. For the next season, you will come into a place where money will not be problem. You will not have to worry about bills. You will not have to worry about how stuff will get paid. It is already being released unto you. Say of the Lord. Come on and clap your hands and give God the praise. Hallelujah. So that 
Jack is just you. When I had my encounter with him, it established something in me. Basically, every time you encounter salvation, God is saying to you, Shalom. Yes. When you say, I am saved, God is saying, Shalom. When you are saying, I'm born again, you're telling people that you have encountered a reality that God has about you that says there's nothing you can do that will ever break me. Yes, Lord. Peace. What is what? Nothing missing? What? Nothing broken. So if you carry the Prince of Peace, that means you are unbreakable. If death has been destroyed, right, then there's nothing past, present, or future that can ever tell you anything. I always tell people, God has, you know, when we say God has a word, you, know, you just, you just release the word, you release the word, thank you. You know, when God is speaking, that means He has not an opinion about you, but that means you've been spoken for. Do you know what it means to be spoken? How many married people we have here? When you enter into a covenant with the Lord, or when God speaks over you, or when you have a relationship with someone, you're dating, then you become a nightmare, exclusive, then you get engaged, and then you get married, right? That means you're off the market. Right? The best is supposed to be. That's what supposed to be, right? You are off the market. You're no longer available. Well, see, when God speaks over your life, you have been spoken for and you are off the market. That means whatever the enemy tries to tell you, whatever he tries to, to throw at you, like, hold up. That's not what. He says about me, I have been spoken for. You understand that? So when I say Shalom Alecha, I'm just putting another level of God in the atmosphere of your life. So when conflict, and when contradictions, and when things try to speak otherwise, you say, no, that's why there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. How can you, how can you deal with this? Because I've been spoken for. He says, Shalom Alecha. Hallelujah. And if you don't believe he said it, you go to John 20 after he was resurrected. Yeah. He spoke it before he ascended. He said something when he met the disciples. He first said, Peace be unto you. And he goes, That's Shalom Alecha. Yeah. When you say, so You're reading in English, I'm just telling you in the language. Right. Shalom Alecha. Then he said, and With this, receive the Spirit. He breathes on them, right? And then he says again, what? So in between the spirit, there is a peace. And there is a peace. There's a reason why. Because when you receive Messiah, when you receive Messiah, you're sure. When you are born again, there is a breath of God that entered into you. Right? going from person to person to person to person to person. He's not individually breathing on you, on you, on you, on you. He didn't individually breathe. He breathed in one dimension. It is his body and every breath has been blowing ever since then. Texas, the Lord said to 
bring the Torah. Now, last time I mentioned a little bit, can you just come back a little bit with the talent with the volume? It's right on the screen. Um, the Torah is the scroll that is pulled out in the synagogue. It is the first five books, it's Genesis all the way to Deuteronomy. Abiyoshi, Shemot, Vaikra, Patikba, Davorim. What I just said was, I just spoke the Bible books to people. And the thing about it is that, go ahead, Shavuot. Kitty, can you go with me, please? Sarah, can you help me? But the Lord told me to bring the Torah scroll. The scroll is important because it is the center of worship for Jewish people. Because God gave the, he gave the Torah to Israel. I know in Christian they say law, but it's instructions. It taught them how to live and how to have a relationship with God. It wasn't law, and it was never for salvation. The mistake that Christians make, they think Torah or the law is for salvation. Torah is never about salvation because God had already delivered them out of Egypt. Right? So they didn't work themselves out of Egypt. But the Torah is important because it tells us who we are as chosen people. But when they sat on Mount Sinai and they stood there, remember the, 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 the big, I call it the big God show. When God shows up in the lightning and the thunder and the mountain tremble and the shofar blast. You see this in Exodus 19 and then in Exodus 20. He then says, I am the Lord thy God. The thing about this is so amazing is that they said the shofar blew. You ever want to know why the shofar grew louder and louder and louder? You ever have a question why it grew louder? Can okay, I want you everybody to stand up for me? The reason why it grew louder, I want you, I want you to do this. I want you to, to, to breathe in and exhale as much as you can. Breathe in. Now exhale till you can't no more. Just exhale. You done? Now, see, you have a limit on your blowing. God is God. He can only blow. He doesn't do that. Because if he did that, he's pulling from something else to cause his breath. <laughs> right? Because when you're going to breathe again, you got to do this, right? Breathe in something to let it out. It grew louder because God is God and he can only just continue. He didn't pull from another realm. He didn't pull from someplace else. He didn't do this. <sighs> that means he's not God. You understand what I'm saying? I'm saying this because as the scroll comes in, I hope they bring the cloth. Bring the cloth, yeah. This scroll is very important because the scroll this cave, it was smuggled out of Nazi Germany. It's considered a Holocaust survivor. They smuggled it out and got it to Jerusalem. It's about a hundred years old. If you're sitting, please stand. Please rise. It's like a judge when they say, all rise, you rise up. And the Lord told me to bring the scroll. And I said, Lord, I do We don't worship it. It's not an idol. We don't moderate it. But we revere it because it's like a person for us. So we Jewish people, because the reason why I was this to Pastor Dustin, it's living. The word is living. The person that wrote it was alive. The ink came from a plant. It's written on leather. The animal that is written on is a, was alive. The feather, I'm a scribe. I write. I'm a scribe in Jerusalem. It's a turkey, but everything is living. Because everything comes from God. When a scroll gets too old, we actually bury it as if it's a person. But it's another dimension also. Because you may see it as, oh, what the, you know, it's just a scroll. But if you can imagine when Moses stood on the mountain and God spoke the holy word of God and he breathed life in his word. 
needs to be going every since. So is that a scroll? Is that the living breath of God? How do you see it? How do you see it? Is it God still speaking all the way from Moses all the way to this dimension? And for such a time as this, it is resting here. Not only that, but it survived Nazi Germany. Which means the people that read from it are probably dead and perished in the Holocaust. Which means that when we open it up, the very breath that stood over when they read from it is still in the atmosphere because this world is living. When they read it, they said, Yoshim Barajs, and they spoke in the beginning. Because it is spirit and because they are part of God, it is still living. The reason why I want you to understand it at this level is that when you read the Word of God, see, when you read this, it's like this is just a book, it's black, you know, you're reading it, or maybe you have iPads, iPhones, and you're scrolling down. You know, scroll through the book, of, and now that's what you do now. So you see this as just paper in a book. But I wanted to, I wanted to bring something living. It says this word is spirit, right? So ask me this, is this just a scroll here? Or is it a dimension of God still speaking to his people? This here is what we call the Brit Hahadashah. This is the New Testament. You say New Testament, it was Brit Hahadashah. This is Matthew all the way to Revelations. So you know, it is Hebrew. And this one is the Tanakh. This is the entire what you call Old Testament. But it's called the Tanakh. T is for the Torah. K is, is for um, or maybe the E is for Navarim, which are the prophets. And the K is for Katurim, which are the writings. So you will have everything from. I gotta think. I gotta translate. My first thing is this Hebrew. I gotta go go here. Gotta translate it. Okay, it's ja it, would, it would be as if from Joshua all the way to Mount High. Even though Joshua is not considered a historical book in the Jewish Bible, Joshua is considered a prophet. So he's a prophet in, in the Tanakh. So if you read, if you open this up, it will not be like your Bible. The dimensions are going to be different. The canonization is different. Okay? Um, but it's still the same books. It's just the way they have it. Okay? So with that said, Shemuel, you ready to uphold this? I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to do what I'm going to say. I'm going to do. Torah. He is the living Torah. You understand? He's the living word. And I 
told Pastor Dustin, I said, I don't know the fullness of why God had me bring it, because I don't take it out very often. But he said he wants to lift up the full counsel of his word in this region. So often we get just stuck in the New Testament, and we forget about the Old Testament. But if we were not for the Old Testament, we would not have the New Testament. And we've got to establish a foundation is what he wants to do. You know, he wants to establish the foundation in this territory. You understand? So, you think you can do it? You're fine. You're going to lift it up. This is a prophetic act, and I know something's going to shift when it happens.
he will do. Now, now, he says, turn now, now. He says, now, now. We've been waiting. He said, I can use the word now, 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 now. So I ripped the veil, I ripped the veils, I ripped the veils and I removed the scales. I establish you, I establish you in the now of my presence. I establish you in the eternity of my will. He said, I travel all the way. Ah! He said, when my word comes to you, it just doesn't come to you. It doesn't come from a dimension of time. It travels all the way. It has traveled not just to you, but it has traveled all the way through every person before you. Every person, every generation, every person in your DNA. Ah! For such a time as this, I now establish the foundation. Build up the ruins. <laughs> the foundation. Be the repair of the bridge. For such a time as this, it is now.
don't worship it, it's not an idol, but it's a living document. It's a living contract. It's a living covenant, really, not a contract, but a covenant. It's a living covenant. He says, I want you to look upon it and live. Look upon it and live. Look upon it, remember, he said, live. Choose life and it will go well with you. Living water flow. Living water flow. Living water flow. Here it comes. So I give it, here it comes. Let it happen. Living water flow. I see it. Here it Living water flow. Living water flow. I see this verse. Let it happen. Living water flow. Living water flow. All the way from Moses, all the way from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it water flow, let it let it flow. Let it water flow, let it flow. Let it water flow, let it flow. Let it water flow, let it flow. Let it go, let it water flow, let it flow. I see it. Let it water flow, let it flow. Let it water flow, let it flow. Let it wash over you. Let it wash over you. The spirit. Again, it's not the scroll, it's the mention where it came from. And make sure we don't get caught up in the idol. So I think idol is the flow of the spirit, the word, the breath, the wind, the ruach. Let it water flow. Let it water flow. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. Out of your belly, let it water flow. Out of your belly, let it water flow. Out of your belly, give me what you flow. Out of your belly, give me what you flow. Out of your belly, give me what flow. Out of your belly, give me flow. Out of your belly, give me what flow. I crown you. I crown you. I crown you both tonight. I crown you. I crown you. He says, I crown you. I crown you. Hey, 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 hey. You can imagine when they went in the wilderness and the ark of the Lord would go and they would carry it in the ark. We knew there was air, air horns around it, but it, we knew that it was manna and we knew that the decalogue of the word it was the Torah. They would carry it. But whatever it went, they followed. Follow it, meaning you guys are facing me. Trust the look to you. Look to that. So as you walk, follow it. But as you follow it, well, if you want to get behind you can, but you can use your eyes. It doesn't really matter. But it's really the position of your heart. You say, Father, all that you say, I will do. When Moses was told to ask them, the elders, when God told them to ask them in Exodus 19, they responded to God and they say, Na say Again, all that the Lord says, we will do. That means, God, everything that you say for us to do in this region, by your word, establish it. And through our obedience, you will be faithful. By your word, establish it. And through our obedience, you will be faithful. By your word, Lord, you establish it. And through our obedience, you will be faithful. 
by your word, Lord, establish it. And through our obedience, you will be faithful. I want you to say, I give my life to the 
the word and all that the Lord speaks over my life. I'm ready to fulfill my destiny, my purpose, my call. What God has spoken, not what fans, not what friends, and not peer pressure, but what the Lord speaks.
They are the assignment that sabotages us. You understand? You said you didn't come here. Yeah, you came here, but you said, I came to reset your value. And you no longer to carry the burden of another person's dysfunction and their personhood. All right? It's up to you.
truly. I know you don't even like this, but I'm going to go ahead and step in your uncomfortability. Uh, okay? But I honor you truly in my life more than just a rabbi that can cut up the meat and, and express things that I don't understand on a daily basis, but as a brother of one that truly um, is more than just what we can represent, I mean, present to somebody, but the true authenticity of brotherly love, I honor you and I thank you for everything that you have portrayed that some have missed, but I'm telling you, I thank you. Miss Sarah, I thank you. I thank you for the moments that you let me borrow you for just a little bit. Amen. 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 Pastor Kenny. Prophet. I honor y'all. I really do. Amen. I thank God for everything y'all are doing. More than just in a place in a Houston but all over that God is sending y'all and sent y'all from hey, and sent y'all from Amen. Thank you. I love you and my children. Amen. Dave Charity, I honor you. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for all you do, the things that nobody ever will know about, that only God knows about that you do in private. I thank you. Josh, I thank you. Truly, truly, truly love you. Amen. Words can't express it. Amen. Miss Barbara, I love you. Amen. I love you. The value you are to me. Say Shane, even though he's out. Amen. Kyle, Avery, they're back right there. Probably tired some of this, okay? I love y'all. I thank y'all. I honor y'all. Since the beginning, y'all been here with us. And we thank y'all for everything y'all done, the time you spent from the bottom of my heart. But not for what you've done, but where you've locked arms. Truly. Asia. Man, I love your family. All of you. All of you. All of you. Okay? If you ain't got it yet, all of you. I mean that. Truly. Josh. Amen. Prophet, words can't express it. My goodness, we just whew, from day one when God spoke and I knew there was power coming off of him. He was preaching over there at that, that church. But I seen a woman of integrity. I seen one that wouldn't compromise. I seen one that had stood and I just I thank you for what you are to me and my family. Amen. I love you. Agape. Adrian, Brandy, Carly, Michaela. I love you guys. Thank you for all that you do. Amen. I thank you for it. The, the trueness. Look, I'm not fabricating something. This is my heart. You can take this building. You can take everything else. But I love you. I'm telling you, without family, it's nothing. Amen. Apostle Rodney. you for what you're standing for where many won't stand and I don't have to get into that but I thank you for what you're doing and I thank you the honor that you carry the love the true agape and the peace that you carry and this is what I'm on the hook
hug from you. I love you, brother. college 
on a probationary not, not. issue level. Because I was at, at Harvard and they had me as a probationary student, meaning they said that if I could show that I could do the work, they would admit me. Well, I got the, just got the email that says, congratulations, you've been accepted officially. Oh, yeah. I do this for someone, maybe she wants to go back to school. As old as I am, God said to go back to school. Amen. You know, I'm a rabbi and all that. I'm not like, I'm done with it. He said, no, because I need to take you into the places of intellectualism. Come on. Yes. The courses I had to take, it challenged me, but I always brought up the young people. As old as I am, I am a student like you. And there were times when I quoted the Bible in my papers, gave the scripture references. In discussions, I was challenged, on challenge me, says, are you quoting the Bible? I said, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Amen. Sometimes God will take you into places. It has nothing to do, because I was like, it, it has nothing to do with Harvard. It's the fact that Harvard needs to hear God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Whatever you are, Amen. it may, it doesn't matter. You people in school, we are the only demonstration of the spirit, sometimes intellectualism. Because they lean on their humanism, they lean on themselves. Right. You understand? But you never know what God is doing. So I just wanted to share that. But that was right. I wasn't expecting. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, I had done it. And I <laughs> did my final application. I knew that the, the, the decision was going to come. It actually came early because what's going to come to a little while later. I got to check your email, and here's the letter. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Amen. 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 How, 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 Amen. <laughs> hey, but while I was in the steps of a good man, uh, ordered by the Lord, he ordered his steps for a particular assignment. Amen. And I always send a prophetic voice into a place for a particular place. <coughs> That's right. Amen. We talk very long. I just want to share something with uh, my friend, uh, my prophet is Yvonne. Amen. Just come for a quick moment. I'm going to be but I won't be long. <laughs> I was trying to do a little prayer with the Lord so to do it. Open it. Uh, so I first came a couple of days before God showed like a broken face or thoughts. It was broken. But then God showed me when it was completely restored. God said, you've been restored. Wow. Yes. You came broken. Yes. He's restored you through his word. Yes. yes. So I, I just read that word to you, okay? Yes. So Father, let us pray on that. Father, thank you for the restoration yes. power of God because you're your home of Rafa. God, I heal that. Yes. God, that you healed and you're restored to God. Father, you know that you're not done with it yet, but Father, you just wanted to know that you've seen broken pieces. <coughs> you put it back together. There's only you can do. As a man who's blind, you picked dirt from the ground, and you put it and restored his vision. Father, you restored it, God. You made it completely whole in you. Yeah. We thank you for this great work, Father. And I was not seeing, ears and not heard. Yeah. But reach to the heart of man what you're going to do through her life. Yeah. Use it for your glory, God. Yeah. Yeah. Get your glory for my life. In Jesus' name, and all the saints say, Amen. 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 The second thing you guys can prepare to go on your way home is prepare to see your best offering, your best seed. And God says, some of you can sow a hundred. He didn't tell me that. But he said, sow your best seed. Amen. I mean, I mean, God was like how we did it last night. So on your way out the door, the gentlemen are serving the people of God. You get a chance to sow to you and God. He said, sow your best seed. Whatever that means to you, you'll know what God speaks to you. Know, serve you. Amen. You want to hear a little joke? I'll give you a little joke. It's good one. Third comment. The joke was I remember when I first got married, my wife, it was time for offering time. Nobody would always do the money because I was a little cheapskate, you know. When I first got married. Next time I had a big money, I'd have to look at my wife. But she had her face was a little bit bigger than mine at that time. So she had her face, she sold a thousand, and she sold whatever. Got to a rich life at that time. But I was young, and I thought, nah, I thought, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he encouraged God to do it. God knows what yeah. he's giving you because he gives seed unto the sower. Yeah. Yeah. And don't yeah. panic. He said, somebody give a hundred. But if you want your thousand, to you and God. But he said, someone can give a hundred in the house tonight. And I want to send your best seed, whatever it may be, to you and God. The third thing is, that, uh, uh, amen. Uh, is, uh, God gave you a scripture you want me to read. As God was speaking to you, the man of God looked over and he said, I heard the Lord say, he's right. God was speaking to you at the same time he was saying. 
So we're going to do it some prayer, and then we'll go out. And we'll read first, then we'll pray. Our hearts and minds are clear. It comes from the book of Jude, chapter 1, chapter 1. Starting in verse 24, it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy. So God, you got joy. We started with joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let all the church say, Amen. Amen. That's what we add to that. You may go in peace. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all henceforth and forevermore. And to be it again, may God be with you. Amen. 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 Amen.